Now that two issues of Battle Chasers are out, I wanted to go ahead and give my honest review to you guys and gals, and all you comic lovers out there. I previously did a video surrounding the controversy on the book, so I won't get into all that, but Joe Mad was originally supposed to be the artist on this new series. Now he's only writing. The artist is Ludo Lullaby, and while he is a good artist, he is no Joe Maderera. However, I would like to state that there are other artists out there who do a very good Joe Mad type style, like Mike Bowden. I mean, look at this. This is incredibly close to a Joe Mad style. It's really great. Then there's also Roger Cruz. Now, this is some of his older stuff, but it's incredibly close to Joe Mad. And I don't know what he's been up to, to be honest, I had to look him up, but he's currently working on some DC titles. But I'm sure either one of those guys would love that kind of opportunity, and I would like to personally see one of them on the book. It'd be a much closer look to the previous nine issues, but that's just me. There are moments when we get glimpses of that awesome Joe Mad F style from Ludo, but most of it is just his own kind of take and style on it, which again, to me, is a little lacking. I wish it was a little more like Joe Mad. Heck, I wish it was Joe Mad. After all, on his Kickstarter campaign he ran, we were told he was going to draw it. So that is a pretty big letdown for fans and backers of the campaign who backed only to see that happen and to make it happen. They got Joe Mad the money so they could fund an issue number 10 and Joe Mad is not drawing it. It's been like 20 years, so people gave their money to make that happen. And then Joe kind of craps on all of them and has another guy do the book. So that's a pretty low blow. And then, to not come out and make any kind of statement about it, an apology or an explanation, and that's to my knowledge. Uh, I have not heard anything, seen anything, uh, but if he has, please let me know. But to me, that's called crapping on your fans, and that's just not cool. Now, I would like to say this. He probably had good intentions, and he did want to do it, but then he remembered the amount of time sequentials take and was like, nah, I have video games to make. It's going to take up way too much of my time. But really, come on, man. You couldn't just give us like one issue. Keep your promises. Seriously. That all said, I did not back the project, but I do really just want to see a continuation of the original series and see where it goes, like most of the fans, to see how the story ends. So many cliffhanger books didn't see their end. Steampunk was another one that I really enjoyed and would have loved to see the, the close. Like, give me the final. But unfortunately, we never did. So, of course, I'm excited to see that one of them is finally perhaps getting its proper end. But how are these new issues going? That's the big question. Are they just as good as the first issues? I'll give you my opinion on it. Are you ready? Let's go. At the outset, I just want to say that I'm going to be basing this review on the previous nine issues. How does it compare to them? Does it continue in the same vein and just kind of keep that momentum going? Now, sure, it's been 20 years, but if you're doing sequential issues, I think it's important to keep some semblance of the original. Keep the continuity as best you can and somehow hide that 20 year gap. It'd be nice if in 20 years when someone's reading it, they're able to just read it and it continues well and they're not like, whoa. What the hell happened there? That's just me. All right, so spoilers. Yes, I will get in some major spoilers in book 11, but I'll warn you when we get there if you don't want any, any of those spoilers. So, issue number 10. Issue number 10 does a pretty good job, I think, of continuing the story. You even got a nice synopsis of the past nine issues and where we're at now. And it also picks up right where we left off from book nine. Red Monica has been betrayed by Lord August, and she barely escapes, and Akimon brings her to Garrison's shack in the woods. And just in case you were wondering what an issue 10 might look like if Joe Mad were drawing it, there is actually a sneak peek in the back of the anthology 
Um, and I think it might have been an issue number nine as well, if I'm not mistaken, but I didn't go back and look. Anyway, it shows us what those pages may have looked like. They are pretty stinking awesome. And it's a bit different than what we got, to say the least. It also shows a bit of a scene with Nolan, which I wonder if that could have been maybe a flashback to something with Lord August, maybe how he came to be, or when they first met. I don't know. But one thing I do want to point out is that the first nine issues did a really good job of jumping around from scene to scene. It wasn't all focused on just one character. And there are a lot of characters in Battle Chasers. So you get some of Gully and Calbretto, then some of Garrison, some of Nolan. It'll cut to the King. And then you get some of Red Monica as well. Issue 10 and 11, you only get two storylines. You mainly get Garrison and Red Monica and the Hunter Squad. And a little bit of Gully at the end with her supposed brother, Sebastius Nafar. And nothing of that in issue 11. It doesn't follow through. So... While issue 10 is a decent start, I do have one pet peeve. You have this new group of hunters that you're introducing, and to be honest, I was a bit confused as to who was Leech and who was Sin. Their names are only mentioned once, together, and if you're not paying close attention, it may kind of throw you off. Their names don't exactly indicate who's who. I mean, is Leech the guy who has all these vials of blood all over him, or is it the guy who's like an elemental character fading into trees, controlling the ground, and all kinds of other stuff? Also. These characters are sick looking characters. Updated a little from what we saw back in the issue 10 preview uh, from Joe Mad. And I have no issues there. I think the characters look awesome. But I think what have, would have made them much cooler was a bit of information, a little narration on what they do. Tell me about Leech's vast power set. He can see through the eyes of animals. He can fade into trees. He can control things. That's awesome. Tell me how they're all connected. Some shred of info that links it all together. Tell me how I got that name. Something, anything. Just throw some narration in there describing what's going on or some dialogue or something. What about Leech? Tell me what's going on with those vials all over him. Is it blood? Is it some special juice? How does that make this powerful blast shoot through his gun that seems like just this ordinary gun? Sure, what we see on the page is cool, but I think when you leave too many questions just floating out there, it can kind of disrupt your reader and take them out of the story. Or at least leave them questioning, like, what's going on. And it definitely did for me. For instance, like, what happens when Akimon takes off his mask? What's that all about? It's only really alluded to. And in all the nine previous issues, it's never even hinted at that there's some sort of power lurking under that mask of his. So you're just like, okay, what does he do exactly? They seem to know some information that we don't. So you're just like, okay, you kind of have to take it on faith. But all that said, I did think 10 was a, a fun book. Um, again, pretty good. Lacking a little bit if you want me to really get into these new cool hunter characters that we do see. So then, book 11. As I previously mentioned, in this book we only get one storyline. The Pursuit of Red Monica is the main subject here, and we don't see any conclusion to the gully scene at the end of the book uh, from book 10. There's no cutting away to another scene, it's all one contained story. For issue 11, I think this one suffers in a similar way to book 10, but much more. And now this is where I'm going to get into some spoilers. So if you don't want to hear a huge change that's about to take place and on one of the main characters, then you'll want to uh, stop here. Alright, I'll give you that second to, to determine if you want to go forward or not. Here we go. So in book 11, at the beginning, we're briefly given some information on Garrison's sweet-looking sword. Finally. Okay. We we do get some narration here, but based on what's about to happen, again, I'm kind of left wondering, what the hell? I went back and I looked, and in all the previous nine issues, we only get one look at some of the special abilities of this magical sword, and it's never really explained. So we finally get some explanation, but my question is this. Is it enough? Is it enough to explain all this? It powers him up in the beginning, giving him some kind of crazy power. But then he stops and almost lets Grave kill him. He gives in kind of awkwardly after vowing revenge on the one who burned his house down, which happens to be Grave. Then Grave, this huge crazy dude, just mops the floor with him, even after getting his leg cut off. So then Garrison gets flayed and killed with his own sword and then suddenly comes back as this. 
Okay. Now, granted, the next issue can all bring it all to a head and give us some much needed information as what the heck is going on, but dang, whoa, what a huge, huge change. This is basically your best character, one of your best characters. Him and Red Monica, to me, are probably your, your, your best characters. And two issues into your new series, you've killed him and brought him back. I mean, what? Is he dead? So many questions. So many questions. So my only hope is issue 12 doesn't leave us hanging. Like, what the heck just happened? Is he really dead? Can he walk amongst the living now in this, in this, this new form? I mean, so many questions. And questions are fine, don't get me wrong as long as they get the proper answers at the proper time. And they better be coming soon, because this comes out of left field with very, very little foreshadowing. Now I know what you're thinking. What, man, can't you have a surprise in a comic? I mean, come on! And sure you can. There's nothing wrong with surprises and cliffhangers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to me, it just feels like it's missing some key components. It all just feels rushed. Where is the buildup? Joe Mad is introducing all these new ideas. Like, for instance, the fact that Grave is mentioning Garrison's wedding, his sister, and Garrison apparently killed his sister at their wedding? Like, what? Okay, again, lots of questions there. He kind of leaves all these questions just hanging out there without any closure, and then layers on more questions. Again, this is, this is a main, main character. You cannot rush this. Now, go back and look at how he introduces Sebastius Nafar. You got four pages devoted to this crazy creature that they're going to battle at the end of the book. And then Sebastius shows up. He drops this bomb on everyone. A crazy surprise. But we're given the proper information, and the bomb just drops hard, and we feel it. Then, in the following issue, we get ten pages of backstory for Sebastius' childhood. We see this intricate story that he's weaving. That's build-up. Then we have the ultimate question that he leaves hanging out there. Is he really Gully's brother? That's fine. In fact, that's perfect. Because you get you got the proper buildup, you got all the proper information, and all the components to make it work. And that really worked. With this storyline, you get one page of buildup. You're hinting at this sword and kind of like what it is, maybe. And you really have to rely on your memory if you haven't gone back and reread the whole series to really know what's up with this sword, which again is really only barely hinted at, even with a misspelling. That should be accursed, I'm assuming. And it's kind of vague what's going on with, with Garrison, the sword, and now all of a sudden it gives him some power. Again, this is a new ability, something new you're introducing. So with the proper information and proper buildup, this all works. But me personally, I feel like, it's just my opinion, it feels rushed. And I'm feeling that because I have so many questions that are just left hanging out there and they're unanswered. So my thing is this, take your time, develop all these things, give me answers, even just some little crumbs, but I need something. You can't just layer all these questions upon questions upon questions. I'm just like, whoa, I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm, I'm out there, man. I, I have no idea. So issue 12 better be awesome. <laughs> All right, last thing to mention. This issue has some language that none of the previous books had, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, I didn't go read all the previous nine issues, but I did not see, I don't remember any curse words dropping like issue 11 has. Okay, Grave is dropping F-bombs, he's dropping an S-word, a damn. Whoa, I mean, it's a departure from the previous issues, okay? So it seems like there is no consideration here for the continuity of the previous issues with that, um, with the language stuff. Just another abrupt change that I think is kind of like, okay, again, not keeping with the continuity of the previous nine issues. So there you go. That's my take. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? Have you read it? What stood out to you? Do you love it? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your take on it. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to be back here soon for a review on issue 12. All right, till then. In the meantime, take a second to like, subscribe, and if you're a comic lover, check out my latest Indiegogo campaign for Shadow Century. Thanks guys, and peace.